Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's debate on the subject of creationism. We have two distinguished speakers with us who will present their well-considered arguments on this topic. To my right, we have Alex, who will be advocating in favor of creationism. To my left, we have Jordan, who will take the opposing stance, challenging the tenets of creationism. Each speaker will deliver a constructive speech, outlining their position and supporting it with evidence and reasoning. There is no strict time limit. However, we do ask that our speakers be concise and direct. We will begin with Alex's opening speech in support of creationism. Please, Alex, take the floor when you're ready. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I stand before you to assert that creationism offers a credible and deeply meaningful explanation for the existence of life and the universe that we inhabit. Unlike the random, undirected processes suggested by evolution, creationism postulates that the complexity and order we observe in the natural world are the products of an intelligent designer. By examining the intricate structures within living cells, the precise tuning of universal constants, and the vast biodiversity of life, we find a pattern that suggests purpose and intentionality. Furthermore, the historical tradition of numerous cultures recounts a narrative of creation which points to a collective understanding of a world brought into existence by a higher power. The very existence of moral and ethical frameworks reflects an order that evolution alone cannot adequately explain. I propose that these aspects of our world align more consistently with the view that we are the result of deliberate creation rather than mere chance and natural selection. Thank you, Alex, for your perspective. Ladies and gentlemen of the audience, today I stand before you to articulate why creationism, although a deeply held belief for many, should not be viewed as a scientifically viable explanation for the origins and diversity of life on Earth. The central issue with creationism is that it is founded on principles that are not falsifiable, and hence it does not adhere to the scientific method. It relies on supernatural explanations that fall outside the scope of empirical scrutiny and offers no predictive power to further our understanding of natural processes. In contrast, the theory of evolution, which is supported by a vast body of convergent evidence from fields such as genetics, paleontology, and comparative anatomy, provides a cohesive and testable explanation for the diversity of life. Evolution does not negate the presence of complexity or order, but instead explains these phenomena through natural processes like mutation, natural selection, and genetic drift. Through an understanding of evolution, we are able to make predictions, develop technologies in fields such as medicine and agriculture, and comprehend the interconnectedness of life on this planet. Consequently, while creationism may hold spiritual significance for many, it does not meet the criteria required to be considered science and should not be taught as a scientifically supported theory alongside evolution in educational curricula. Thank you, Alex and Jordan, for your opening statements. We will now proceed to the cross-examination round of our debate. This is an opportunity for both speakers to engage directly with one another's arguments asking clarifying questions and challenging points that have been made. In this round, each speaker will have the chance to question their opponent, highlighting any perceived weaknesses in their opponent's case and further elucidating their own position. As we begin this segment, we will have Jordan go first. Jordan, you may now ask Alex questions pertaining to his presentation on creationism. Please remember to be respectful and allow each other time to respond. Let's maintain a productive and civil discourse. Jordan, when you're ready, you may begin the cross-examination. Alex, I appreciate your viewpoint, but have some concerns regarding the scientific legitimacy of creationism. You've mentioned the intricacy of life as a sign of intelligent design, but could not the appearance of design be a tribute to natural selection, where simple organic compounds gradually evolved over billions of years into more complex forms due to environmental pressures? Moreover, how does creationism accommodate the vast amounts of geological and fossil evidence that suggest an ancient Earth with a dynamic history of life, including the extinction and evolution of species well documented through transitional forms? Thank you for your question, Jordan. While it is true that natural selection can lead to changes within species, 
the leap to complex organisms from simple organic compounds has not been observed nor replicated in any scientific setting. This gap in the observable evidence challenges the sufficiency of natural selection as a complete explanation for the diversity and complexity of life. For creationists, the appearance of design is not merely appearance, but rather indicative of an actual designer, much like a watch is indicative of a watchmaker. As for the geological and fossil evidence, creationism can accommodate these through a view of history that may differ from the conventional interpretation. The existence of fossils and sophisticated geological features can be understood within a framework that includes the action of a creator with the possibility of different mechanisms, such as a global flood or other catastrophic events that are described in historical texts. Therefore, while creationism may employ a different interpretive lens, it upholds a perspective of Earth's history that accounts for the evidence at hand without relying solely on the gradualism implied by evolutionary theory. Thank you, Jordan, for your cross-examination. Now, Alex, it is your turn to ask Jordan questions regarding his statements on the theory of evolution and its relation to creationism. This is an opportunity to address specific parts of Jordan's argument and to seek further clarity on the position presented in defense of evolution as a scientific theory. Please frame your questions thoughtfully and give Jordan the chance to adequately respond. Alex, when you're prepared, you may begin your cross-examination. Jordan, while you've made a point about the scientific method and falsifiability as criteria for a sound scientific theory, I would like to explore the basis of evolution's predictive power. Can evolution accurately predict future biological developments? How does evolution account for the initial spark of life, the origin of life from non-living matter? Lastly, how do you reconcile the gaps in the fossil record and the abrupt appearance of fully formed species in the Cambrian explosion with the gradualism that is central to the theory of evolution? Those are excellent questions, Alex. Let me address them one by one. Concerning evolution's predictive power, it is important to distinguish between predicting future biological developments in the sense of forecasting the exact traits of organisms and predicting the kinds of changes that may occur given certain environmental pressures. Evolutionary theory does enable us to make predictions about how populations will respond to changes in their environment because it describes how genetic variation within a population can lead to adaptations over time. For instance, We've seen this in the way bacteria evolve resistance to antibiotics. As for the origin of life, that is the purview of abiogenesis, not evolution. The theory of evolution begins with the presence of life and describes how it changes over time. Abiogenesis seeks to understand how life might have arisen from non-living matter. While this field is still in development and full of complexity, it does not invalidate the theory of evolution any more than the mystery of gravity invalidates the laws of motion. Regarding your question about the fossil record and the Cambrian explosion, these are areas where evolution provides a framework for understanding. The fossil record is not complete due to the specific conditions required for fossilization, but many transitional fossils have been found that support the evolutionary links between groups. The Cambrian explosion refers to a period where there is a relatively rapid appearance of most major animal phyla. This does not contradict evolutionary theory, as the explosion occurred over millions of years, which, in geological and evolutionary terms, allowed ample time for these diversifications. The apparent abruptness is also partially an artifact of the sparse fossil record before this time. Evolution does not always proceed at the same rate, it can happen rapidly under the right conditions. Thank you, Jordan and Alex, for your insightful cross-examinations. We have now reached the closing arguments round of our debate. This is the final opportunity for each speaker to summarize their main points, articulate the core of their stance, and leave a lasting impression on our audience. In this round, Jordan, who holds the opposing view to creationism, will present his closing statement first, followed by Alex, who advocates in favor of the creationism perspective. Each closing argument should encapsulate the essence of your positions and also address the significant elements raised during the debate. Jordan, when you are ready, please proceed with your closing remarks. 
Ladies and gentlemen, as we draw this debate to a close, I want to re-emphasize the importance of distinguishing between faith-based beliefs and empirical science. Creationism, while meaningful for many on a spiritual level, lacks the evidentiary support, falsifiability, and explanatory power that characterize scientific theories like evolution. The strength of a scientific theory lies in its ability to be tested, its compatibility with existing knowledge, and its capacity to make accurate predictions about the natural world. Evolutionary theory meets these criteria and has proven itself robust across comprehensive scientific inquiry. The complexities and wonders of life are indeed awe-inspiring, but to ascribe them to an intelligent designer is not a scientific proposition. It's a statement of faith. Theories in science must be grounded in observable, measurable phenomena, and evolutionary biology delivers this by demonstrating how life has diversified through natural processes. In our pursuit of truth, we must rely on methodologies that allow us to hold our hypotheses up to the light of evidence. As we navigate through the vast expanse of knowledge, it is critical to approach our understanding with intellectual honesty, grounding our education and decision-making in what can be rigorously tested and peer-reviewed. Science education should thus teach our children how to think critically, evaluate evidence, and embrace the scientific literacy that will empower them to be informed citizens of our increasingly complex world. In closing, while respecting the personal beliefs many hold regarding creationism, it is my firm position that it should not be presented in academic settings as a scientifically validated theory. It is through the lens of science that we can best understand the mechanisms of biodiversity and the unfolding story of life on our planet. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as we come to the end of this engaging debate, I want to reiterate the core of the creationist perspective. The world we live in is filled with marvels of complexity and precision that are not adequately explained by the theory of evolution alone. Creationism brings to the table an explanation that encompasses these phenomena by invoking an intelligent designer, a concept that resonates with our intuitive recognition of design and purpose in the world around us. Throughout history, individuals and civilizations have recognized the signs of purpose in nature, and this collective intuition should not be dismissed as mere coincidence or wishful thinking. Instead, it points toward a common understanding that there is more to life than what is reducible to physical processes. Moreover, the presence of universally acknowledged moral and ethical principles suggests an overarching order that aligns more with the existence of a deliberate creator than with accidental emergence. The elegance of creationism is that it bridges the realms of empirical observation and metaphysical insight. While the specifics of creationist thought may vary, it remains a worldview that grants meaning and coherence to the human experience, one that is worth considering as a legitimate explanatory framework for the origin and diversity of life. I advocate for the respectful inclusion of creationism in discussions about our existence, not as a dismissal of scientific inquiry, but as an acknowledgement that science itself may be nested within a greater context. In our search for truth, we must remain open to the possibility that empirical evidence can be viewed through different interpretive lenses, including that of creationism. In conclusion, while the theory of evolution has contributed much to our understanding of biological processes, it does not displace the role of creationism in making sense of the profound order and intricacy inherent in life and the cosmos. Creationism complements the narrative of our origins, enriching our world with dimensionality that nurtures both our intellect and spirit. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of what has been a thought-provoking and enlightening debate on creationism. I want to extend a heartfelt thank you to our speakers, Alex and Jordan, for their articulate and respectful presentations, and to you, our audience, for your attention and engagement in this important discourse. As a reminder, please note that this debate was entirely AI-generated and the opinions presented by our debaters do not reflect the views of this channel. They serve to explore different perspectives on complex topics and foster a spirit of intellectual exploration. We encourage viewers to continue the conversation in the comments below and to share your thoughts on the arguments presented tonight. If you enjoyed this debate, 
please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more content, and don't forget to ring the notification bell so you won't miss any future discussions. Once again, thank you to everyone who participated in this digital exchange of ideas, and we look forward to bringing you more stimulating debates in the future.